HBCU Digest Radio, welcome back to our presidential series, Conversations with Distinguished Presidents and Chancellors from Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Today, our distinguished guest is a friend of the show, Edward Waters College President Dr. A. Zachary Faison, uh, with big personal news today, an extension, a contract extension. Though, so that's always a happy day in our sector. Uh, when you consider it's a good day. <laughs> when you consider the alternative of somebody getting kicked out, so we, you know, we love to hear <laughs> somebody somebody hanging around for a bit. So you are um, on paper uh, in Jacksonville uh, till 2023, and this announcement comes as you are welcoming back students to the campus for the fall semester. First, can you give us uh, just your thoughts on the extension? Uh, you know, the time that you're having there. And what is it like to get this kind of really, really good news when you are, you know, not to not to be, you know, pessimistic or anything, but you're in a really tight spot in terms of, hey, we're bringing these these students back and we're excited about a new semester, but we're in the middle of a pandemic and we want to see how it's going. Yeah. Well, first, Jared, th- thanks for uh, for uh, uh, let me let me let me come on and, and, and share uh, good news about it with Waters College. But. Certainly, uh, just, I mean, very excited about, uh, the board's confidence in, in our work and our leadership. And again, we were, we actually were on paper till 2023 and the extension now carries us through, uh, July of 2025. So just so real, two, two more years. Yeah. yeah. Where you were. Yep. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm don't, sorry. yeah. 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 A, a real vote of confidence, um, from our board, um, and our board leadership. And, you know, again, it, it's been, it's been exciting. Um, and, and I think for us, it, it's a, it's a, uh, a, a trying time right now, of course, in the middle of the pandemic for, for all of us. Um, and so, you know, I think that, um, it, 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 it I certainly don't want to speak for our board, but, but I, but I can speak for myself and that I wanted to ensure our board that I was here for the long haul, um, and that I was going to see us through, um, whatever challenges that may come. Um, and I was just pleased that the board, uh, felt that, that we had demonstrated enough. Um, in our, in our prior two years, uh, here at the institution for them to have that kind of vote of confidence in, in our leadership as we're going forward. So let's talk about that. Um, EWC, you know, obviously the flagship of Jacksonville, uh, the oldest in the state of Florida, but there are some things that you have done that have really, really not only stood out Edward Waters from, you know, the private HBCU sector, but in some ways the sector at large, because, you know, you've, you've had opportunities to get state funding. Uh, for right. for capital projects, you've gotten investments from state legislature, uh, which is historic and unprecedented for you guys. Uh, you're continuing to get you know support from the city of Jacksonville. Um, That's correct. You, you know, you, giving is up, enrollment is going on up. You've enhanced research. How do you what What is the system that you have to have in place? Now, obviously, people can walk and chew gum at the same time, but it's right. rare when you see growth in a lot of different directions at one time it's it, it, at least from the outside signals there's a lot of buy-in down there would you agree with that yeah and what do you think the secret sauce is for getting that accomplished well i think you hit the nail on the head i mean it's all about collective buy-in from the top down and and i will say um it really starts similarly with the relationship and the synergy between uh the board and and the president and, and i'm blessed to have that kind of synergy to have that kind of leadership um, from our board. Our board has really empowered me um, and been a partner with me in, 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 in this administration to really move the institution forward. Um, and so I, I would say I really cite that as probably the most uh, imperative and critical thing uh, that, 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 that has really, really propelled the work that we've been doing forward. I mean, you mentioned some of the things that um, we've been able to accomplish um, from, you know, the, the historic about $3.5 million uh, in recurring funding um, that we're going to be receiving from the state of Florida. I will tell you um, that certainly my board was engaged and involved in helping us to advocate and lobby towards that. Um, again, it, it, it has to be a, a symbiotic partnership between the board um, and, and the institutional um, administrative leadership. And again, I've just been blessed to, to have that kind of synergy here at EWC. One of the things that really stands out, um, and this is important given where we are and the financial implications of being in a global pandemic, you guys and your team helped to knock down uh, a cash deficit um, and ended with a yeah, cash yeah. surplus for the last, the close of the last fiscal year. Now, yeah, for, I, I, I will, yeah. for folks who don't, yeah. who, for lay I, people I will, who don't understand what that is, what, what does that mean <laughs> and how do you do it if you can disclose it? 
I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna put it in 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 terms that our folks can understand. It's robbing Peter to pay Paul. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where literally you you're ending each of your uh, fiscal years with accounts payable from the prior year, and you've got to use uh, the tuition and revenues from your incoming year to pay off your account payables from prior years. So you never catch up. Right. And so, you know, that was, that was something that, you know, we really had been suffering under the yoke of for over a decade. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and I will say that it was probably one of my first and and, and probably, I I think my most prodigious challenge was I said, we, 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 the institution can't persist this way. We, we've got to, we we can't, we literally are not going to make it if we don't, if we don't do something very differently. So, we were fortunate. Um, the institution has been, had been, of course, making a number of efforts over the years um, in trying to court uh, different financial institutions, um, looking at how they could cut costs, looking at how they could raise revenues, um, and certainly a lot of laudable effort went into that. We were we were blessed to be able to um, establish a partnership with the Reinvestment Fund, um, which are out of out of Atlanta. They also have. Uh, matter of fact, I think they have a headquarters up in Baltimore, um, in, in your neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've done some prior work with Fisk. They've done some prior work with Talladega. Um, and they came down and, and sat with me, sat with our leadership team, sat with members of our board. And, 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 and fortunately, they bought into uh, our vision. Um, of course, they wanted to see our data. They wanted to see our financials. And essentially, what they did was they partnered with us. Um, I think it was actually a, 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 a significant factor in their partnering with us was was our place in the community um ewc sits in a in, in northwest jacksonville it's a urban community like most of our, our our historic private hbcus often sit in the heart of the african-american community a, a community that often now has been neglected um and and i think that the fact that we are, are an anchor for that community as a matter of fact i know um, and have a, a, an economic impact of over fifty million dollars in that community certainly was instrumental in in the re, reinvestment fund partnering with us to, to 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 do a refinancing deal when again so many financial institutions wouldn't touch us but but they believed in in our vision they believed in where we were going and and we had some positive indications in terms of enrollment um, in terms of our retention in terms of our graduation rates and, and just what the vision was and they could see that we were taking demonstrable steps. Uh, towards making that vision a, a, a reality. And so, um, you know, we were able to, 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 to do a refinancing deal with them uh, that actually yielded us enough upfront cash to refinance to pay off all of our accounts payable and generate a, uh, a, a, a seven-figure uh, uh, net cash a surplus for the institution. So, um, and, 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 and like you mentioned, I mean, it, it couldn't have come at a better time with, with, with kind of, you know, not knowing how ominous, you know, the future may be, given that we're in the middle of a pandemic. So it, it couldn't have happened at a better time for EWC. Now, let's talk about that, that the, the COVID-19 element here, because even though this is a scary, scary time for almost every HBCU, it has also been a positive time in the sense that young people have expressed more uh, interest in attending black colleges. They're they're applying more. They're getting deposits. Absolutely. And they're coming. Has that has that been the case in in Jacksonville at EWC? And and what are some of the numbers looking like for you? We are absolutely seeing that. I mean, I've been sharing with everyone. We are cautiously optimistic. I mean, some of the numbers that we're seeing in terms of interest. So I'll give an example. We've got over fifty three hundred applications for EWC and our enrollments right around nine hundred students. So fifty three hundred applications for us is significant. That's about a fifty four percent increase in overall applications. Our deposits are up. I've got nearly at last check about 400 deposits in terms of new students. That's, you know, freshmen, uh, transfers, um, new students. That's up about 52% for us. Now, we're right, literally right in the middle today of, of welcoming back our returning students and our, our, our this week, our, our new students are, are coming in as well. So, you know, we're, 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 Cautiously optimistic, of course. I was sharing with you, you know, until I see the whites of their eyes, you know, I can't, <laughs> I can't make any, 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 any bold declarations. But absolutely, we have seen a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous uptick in terms of interest and deposits, and so um, we're hopeful that that will bode well for us uh, o- over the coming weeks. How do you and your team navigate the reality that this is a a, a virus that disproportionately impacts and negatively impacts Black folks? 
and you're in a state that is, I guess, the nation, the nation's hotspot. And when you consider yeah. the South, because you're you're a Georgia boy, so you you know you yeah, yeah. you're yeah. from a, yeah. you're from a state that's a hot spot. You're working in a state that's a hot spot. When you look out over <laughs> your campus, you look out over your city, you look out over your hometown. How do you navigate and say how do we? How, what optimism do you draw to say this is going to be okay? Yeah, I, I will say that that it has been not without uh, great consternation. I mean, it, it it this is it was probably the most difficult decision that that I've had to make as president was to decide, you know, what's the pathway forward for us in the middle of this pandemic. And of course, we we decided to um, resume on campus operations. We'll be operating with a hybrid, high flex, and virtual uh, instructional environment. Um, and, 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 and we're still navigating it. Um, of course we have, you know, developed, uh, pretty comprehensive, about a 35, 40 page, uh, uh, COVID-19 resumption of campus operations manual, uh, which, you know, some of the highlights are, you know, for example, this year we're, 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 we're doing, uh, only single occupancy in all of our residence halls. Um, so we've got students that are in hotels because again, in this environment, you know, you know, dorm rooms are relatively small anyway, which we usually pack two or three, even up to three in, in a room. You can't do that in this environment. Mm. Um, so we've done single occupancy in all of our residence halls, um, PPE kits, masks for everyone, physical distancing in all of our classrooms. We're encouraging as many students as possible uh, to, to attend virtually. Um, even, even, even if they come back to campus, you know, let's let's you know stay in our rooms and 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 and, and utilize our learning management system uh, to 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 get the instruction uh, virtually. So, I mean, it's a it it it, it is certainly um, not something that I think any of us have all figured out. But I think we're navigating it as very best we can, um, wanting to always ensure the safety uh, of our students and our faculty and staff and our entire community is certainly the priority. Uh, but balancing that also with with the needs of our students, you know, and I, one of the things that I've shared with a lot of people is that HBCUs are not a monolith. You know, you can't say because institution A made this as well, all HBCUs will know my demographic is different. You know, I, I'll share this real quickly. When we moved online back in the spring, there were some institutions that shut everything down and sent everywhere, everyone home. And, and they were lauded for that. And right, right they should have been for, 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 for that campus. Well, for my campus, if I did that, I have about 300 students that literally have nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. So, so shutting my campus down literally means that I would have had homeless students. Right, right. And so, you know, again, you know, so that's the reason why I say we shouldn't, you know, make these kind of broad, you know, judgments. Every campus is different. Uh, you know, every, every, every situation is different. And, and so I think that we just have to really... Uh, trust the leadership and that the leadership, you know, has the ear and the sense and the pulse of their campus community uh, and that they're going to make the best decision um, as, as possible um, thinking about the faculty, staff and students that, that 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 they serve. What are some of the goals now because you've accomplished a great deal in a short period? How do you set new goals for the campus and, and what are those conversations like with the board and the alumni, the students? Yeah. How, do you, how do you how do you fashion what, you know, next looks like? Well, let me say this. We are in no way a finished product. I mean, I, I'm, I'm certainly we're proud of, 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 of the things that we've been able to accomplish, but we have a, a, a long way to go. Um, and, and, and the good thing is that, again, um, I think we're well on our way to being able to do the things um, that our board wants, uh, that our entire academic community wants. So, you know, kind of, you know, probably uh, on the horizon probably is is really uh, the fact that we were able to um, achieve the additional state funding is going to really propel us forward in terms of being able to begin to add some of our, our new academic programs. Um, so our uh, academic leadership team, as a matter of fact, is writing right now uh, prospectuses and, 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 and proposals to send into SAC COC for three new academic programs. One of them is computer and information science. The other one is social work. Um, another one is in forensic science. We're also looking at nursing. Um, and the last one is that we're going to be uh, submitting um, the uh, attended information uh, for us to be able to bring on the first graduate degree program at EWC. Um, and so all this is going to happen within the next six to 12 months. I'm pushing everyone really hard um, to be able to do that. So we're going to be you know, transitioning 
knock on wood, you know, obviously there's a process with SACS and them getting uh, our prospectus and approving it and coming to campus and, and, and all of those attended factors. But uh, we're going to be shifting EWC to EWU prayerfully within the next 12 to 18 months. Um, right. That was part of that we're doing some things, funded, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was part of the announcement. Absolutely. Um, that first graduate degree program, we're looking at a, at a master's degree in business administration, and we're, it's going to be online. We're, we're going to we, we really also want to begin to own own the online space in a much more robust way. We think that that's an opportunity for a space for EWC um, to really be able to to extend its wings and and, and showcase its brand. Um, you know, we were you know, again building upon the fact that SAC has approved. Uh, our first ever fully online degree program, which is a bachelor's degree in business and organizational management. Um, and we also earned the approval for, to offer all of our academic degree programs fully online. So we are really going to be very, very intentional uh, about moving forward um, in that space. And then the final question I'll ask, man, and, it, and this is on a personal tip. So it's it, you're one of the, the few presidents um, that is super active on social media. And what I think distinguishes you is that you're showing, um, in a lot of ways, the way to keep work-life balance. Uh, you're still taking your wife out on dates. Yeah, uh, you, do that. You, you, and I, do that. you and I have something similar. We both hopped on a Peloton bike during a, <laughs> during a Peloton. That's it. During a That's pandemic. It. You got to do it. So how, how, do you, how do you work so hard and push so hard but manage to, to keep time for family, for, for self, uh, to be able to recharge for that hard work that 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 is ahead when you come back into the office. I'll tell you, I think that for me, at least initially, it really was a challenge. Believe it or not, I, I, I you know I had I had put on weight, put on thirty or forty pounds. I've gotten that off of me, uh, you know, because these jobs are they're they're difficult. They weigh on you, especially if you're doing them the right way, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, um, you know, but I think it's important. For uh, our students, our faculty and staff to see that 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 you do have work life balance, that you you know you go hard in the paint for EWC, but that you do have a family, you do have a wife, you do have kids, you do have you know other things outside of that. I, I think that that makes you more palatable, makes you more human, makes you more touchable, um, particularly for students. Um, and so you know it, it's just kind of a part of my leadership ethos it's, it's, it's who i am and, and and i think that you know any leader you have to be authentically you um it, it, you know it, especially students they know the real from the fake so you know you, you have to be authentically you and 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 really um you know work to keep that balance because if you're if you, if, if you don't next thing you know you'll, you'll find yourself getting out of balance and then that that impacts the quality of your work so it's something that, that's important, but I think it's something that, you know, I know, at least for me, I continue to try to refine and, and, and strike that right balance as best I can.